guys for a question. Um, yeah, go ahead. In a collapse of the system, when you talk about collapse occurring, what in what do you see or what do you envision when you see a collapse or when you talk about the collapse? I envision a lot of people losing their jobs and that the funding put forth by the president to try to bail out companies will not work because it doesn't offer a better system or a competitive product. Now, if General Motors had a, an automobile that was better than the Toyota, cheaper, more miles, less polluting, it'll sell. If we say we're going to bail out General Motors, if they don't have a project that we can look at and say, yes, it is better than Toyota, it will enable us to survive. But I don't know what they're, what they're putting out. I think they're going to put out just another rendition of a Chevy or whatever it is. I don't, I've don't. i never seen any product that I feel would be non-competitive, meaning cheaper, faster, better, lighter, longer lasting, then, then you'll survive. If your products aren't that, you'll sell a few. But, and if people don't have the purchasing power to buy your car, unless you give the banks money to lend them money. So it doesn't make sense. What, what Obama is doing, to me, doesn't make sense. I believe he feels that industry is the core of American enterprise. And if you give money to industry, they will hire people. But if you give money to people, they will purchase things. And that industry will take care of that. If you've got an order for 10,000 cars, you can get the money from a bank. But don't put it on, don't give it to industry. That's not the answer. Unless industry presents you with a blueprint of a product that's competitive. Does that answer your question? Well, I was thinking in terms of the collapse, I mean, do you see just a collapse of the financial systems and kind of oh, like okay. a I see what you want to know. Or do you see it going on more than that where we have like basic systems coming down like the electrical grid, things like that. How bad of a, of a, of a, Disaster, are you, are you envisioning that it will take? Well, I tell you what I envision, okay? I envision millions of people with lack of purchasing power, medical care. Then, as it gets worse, since they're cutting back on spending of funding and food for the hungry, if they cut back, they would have mass riots. Mass riots will result in minorities being in the house by 9 o'clock in certain districts. They don't want walking around the street. So they'll be imprisoned or put in the house or stay in your house and, and you come out tomorrow morning at 7. That's okay. They will regulate the time. It's called fascism. But fascism won't work for a long period of time. Just a temporary hold people in check. But if they can't, if there's no purchasing power, insufficient purchasing power, they can't maintain a police force or army. So fascism, unless you take over all the industries and everything and then main, operate the government by big business, which they don't need. They don't need to do anything. They make the laws, you obey them, or you're, or you're out. I see fascism as probable. I see chaos, riots, all kinds of trouble. More crime, uh, people break-ins. I see... A car is for sale very cheap because people don't have money and the housing problem will continue because the government doesn't offer anything. Government meaning in order for a money system up, they have to tax some people to get the money. If most people are not working, you can't tax them. So you have to cut back on medical care, education, all the other areas that the system can't support. That chaos means... Uh, when the government steps in finally and says nine o'clock is the time you go in your house, the government will regulate that. Government meaning industry. That's what I mean by government. There's no real government, you know. They just are. They're, Obama is elected, but we're operating according to Republican standards, as I understand it. I don't see any change. He's building a bigger army, sending more munitions out there in the war zone. We have bases all over the world. He hasn't changed that. And not dealing with the problem, in other words. 
The problem is all nations need access to resources. If you deprive them of that, there's going to be trouble. No matter how many treaties you sign, if the treaty doesn't serve the interest of that nation, we sign treaties and break them because it doesn't serve our interest. Do you understand? But the service signing of the treaty temporarily quells a lot of noise. So Obama really doesn't know what to do. He just has a lot of advisors, but they're all advisors within the monetary system. That's your problem. It's like uh, in the early days of, of primitive society, the guys would advise people to get their bow and arrows together there, you know, only within the context of that system. We don't have uh, an area in Washington called problem solving, where it's like a pentagon. How do you do this? What do you do about traffic accidents? And the authority to act, not merely gather, that more people are killed this month than last month, but it's quieter down this one. Next month, the death rate is higher. They has no authority to act. Without the authority to act, you know what I mean? You have nothing. So we would have what's called a special contingencies department that have immediate access to food. In case there's an earthquake, they act. They don't have to go to Congress and tell them what the problem is. They act. They have the right, the vehicles to act with. So I don't have any, there's very few meetings. Like if there's a terrible earthquake in Japan, I think I told you we would use the North and South Pole to store surplus food. That would be accessible to any nation that had a problem. As immediate as we could make it. There are airplanes that carry the food and drop it, or whatever other means there are for transporting. Now, when you figure the cost of war, they usually tell you how many billions of dollars were spent on the war, but the real problem is a 500 ship sunk with copper, brass, all kinds of materials. We were transporting war tanks to Europe, and the German submarines sank about 500 ships. That's a lot of resources. And that's what I worry about, not how much did it cost. The resources that were sunk now the radioactive material and the poison gas carried on ships other than what we dumped upsets the ocean balance. Now, what do you do about that? We would have groups of people working on oceanography problems. And they have the authority to act when they find out things. Now, with the oceanography department, there's another department, the problem solvers in oceanography, how to restore the reefs how to build a matrix for the reef to form around. It's not just a survey. There's the, the groups that can act that's connected to the oceanography department. What the oceanography department does is tell you we're losing reefs in this regional divisions of the Mediterranean. When I say regional divisions, I mean longitude and latitude. In the early days, they used to name streets one, two, three, four, five. But if you bought a 26, you're far out of town. You have to drive to work. So they changed the numbers to Kosciuszko Street or Smith Street. You never knew how far out that was. Do you understand? So we're going to have to change all that. And instead of calling man a Pithecanthropus erectus, you know, take Latin names and complicate the system, it'll D44 means a Pithecanthropus erectus. In, the old day. in other words, instead of your name, Say, your name is John Smith. There's thousands of John Smiths. So they have to take your fingerprints and all. So in the future, the Army has a serial number, which they assign you. So in the future, when you meet D4411B, it means there is an art, music, science, and technology. So their name will tell you whether you can relate to them or not. 